Hi, everyone. August 2nd, 2021. Oh, boy. Every single day brings such joy. Are you paying attention yet? I like these simple, simple, simple messages. But it's not simple for those who don't know BlackRock. You know, our Federal Reserve's front investment firm buying up, buying up the world. BlackRock. And guess what? BlackRock infiltrated Biden's administration. Oh, there is so many different infiltrations. BlackRock. Look into it if you don't know what BlackRock is all about. But BlackRock's former global head of sustainable investing, Brian Deese, is now director of the National Economic Council. Former chief of staff for the CEO at BlackRock, Adwell Adiemo, ah, butchered his name, I'm sure. He is the deputy secretary of the Treasury. Global chief investment strategist for BlackRock, Mike Pyle, is the chief economic advisor for Kamala Harris. I'm sure there's more in there. Are you paying attention yet? Well, I saw this tweet, and I thought it was, you know, the, f- the, uh, the first tweet of the page, but it wasn't. I scrolled up a little, and I read this. <laughs> Thank you, David Webb. Boy, I love it when I get to laugh a little. David Webb said it would honestly be easier for everybody if Biden would just turn the teleprompter around and just let us read it ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. 1,000 migrants under Texas Bridge. And we can't call this an invasion? Really? Really? This is the largest group of migrants we've ever seen being held by Border Patrol under Anzadoas Bridge in Mission, Texas. I'm sorry. I'm just getting stupider and stupider as it goes along. Okay. Largest group of migrants we've ever seen being held by Border Patrol under this bridge. a popular Rio Grande crossing area nearby. Uh, Let's take a look at this. New, all morning long, we've watched Border Patrol drop off multiple busloads of migrants at a Catholic charity in downtown McAllen where they are given food and shelter before they take buses and flights across the United States. Buses arriving every 30 minutes so far. doesn't look good. And a whole lot of people will look at this and think that these are parents holding on to their children. We don't know that. We don't know. You got a whole lot of coyotes bringing children in and a whole lot of people holding on to children that it's been discovered or um, exposed 
that they're not parents. Invasion. Non-stop mass drop-offs. Catholic Charities. Jesuit. Jesuits. That Catholic Church. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not talking about Catholics. I'm talking about the church. Are they vaccinated? Have any of them been tested? We don't know. The follow the signs crowd assures us that the Delta isn't contagious in the RGV Rio Grande Valley. Look at this. Well, <laughs> it's truly remarkable. A reminder of recent comments from the administration regarding the border. Department of Homeland Security, Mayorkas. The border is closed. Our VP, extreme progress is being made. P, meaning president, said during CNN town hall, migrants in federal custody have been cut by 90%. Oh boy. When the lies become so like, uh, it's not even, it's just the opposite of what is taking place and Americans go along with the lie. That's, it's really a very, very bad way to live. It's not a good way to live. It's a dangerous way to live because you end up putting yourself in danger, putting everyone in danger, especially when the majority are just as stupid. I asked the executive director of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley how many COVID positive migrants they are currently housing in local hotels. She told me, I have been advised not to comment. Second hotel has been confirmed, Texas Inn in uh, West Laco, West Laco. Yeah, we're in big trouble, okay? Got a whole lot going on and boy, Americans are sitting pretty. <sighs> For everything that's coming our way. Chipmunks, okay? Chipmunks, be very scared of them because they have the plague. South Lake Tahoe. These chipmunks with the plague prompted closures. That little cute creature, be scared. Chick, a chipmunk is seen in California. Oh my God, you're kidding. Sorry, I was just interrupted for a second, but yeah, the closing of some areas on the south shore of Lake Tahoe after some chipmunks tested positive for the plague. Boy, we sure do have an awful lot of these diseases and viruses and everybody. I mean, we really need to be just living our life in a hazmat suit, don't you think? People hiking, doing other outdoor activities, avoid contact with animals. They should do the same for their pets. All righty, well, the plague, an infectious bacterial disease, tends to spread by chipmunks, other wild rodents, and their fleas. For humans, symptoms can show up Within two weeks of exposure, fever, nausea, weakness, swollen lymph nodes, if caught early, it can be treated. If not caught early, goodbye. Mites are falling from the sky and biting people. Mites. Oak mite. Mites are biting people. Cicadas may have left D.C. 
region. But the mites they left behind, they're dropping out of trees, then landing on people, biting people. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There is no place like home. <sighs> Do you think we'll wake up from this twister nightmare? Cuomo asked businesses to go to vaccine only admission. Yeah, here he is. Private businesses. How people believe this guy is, it's just amazing, but oh, yes. Okay, well. He looks like he's had a pretty good vacation, well-rested, healthy guy, living the good life, destroying the life of New Yorkers. Bars, restaurants, go to a vaccine-only admission. I believe it's in your best business interest. You know, if I go to a bar and I want to have a drink and I want to talk to the person next to me, I want to know that that person is vaccinated. If I go to a restaurant, and I'm sitting at a table, and the table right next to me, I want to know that they're vaccinated. I believe it's in your business interest to run a vaccine-only establishment. If I went to a bar and I saw Cuomo, I would run the hell out of that bar. Uh, this is how they are mandating the vaccine. See, it's it, it's funny because you got protests all over regarding the vaccine passport. And we've heard already our CDC director said, well, vaccine passports, I believe, is the way to go. Uh, so it's coming. But prior to that, it's so easy to fool Americans. We'll just have private business, corporations, colleges, universities, uh, mandate, you know, city, city uh, governments and state governments, they'll, they'll do the work of the federal government. And we'll just sit back and say, we didn't mandate it. Well, we mandated it for federal government employees, but, but, you know, it's like, what we have on the internet, social media companies that are literally, literally doing the job uh, of what governments can't do, what the federal government can't do. They are destroying our First uh, Amendment rights, free speech, at the orders of the government. So Americans just say, well, they're a private company. Not understanding that even if that were true, they get wow contracts with our federal government. So why can't the federal government condition uh, the, the contract, you know, the billions of dollars that our federal government is going to be handing over to social media companies, why can't they condition it with you don't get to destroy the First Amendment. They could. They don't. Why not? Ah, social media companies working for government. Bay Area imposes mandatory masking. Oh, it's coming. College universities bringing back mask mandates. Connecticut counties reach substantial level for community spread. Get ready, Connecticut. Mask mandates coming. New London, Hartford, New Haven, Windham, Tolan, Fairfield counties. Get ready. Uh, this just in, Louisiana. Governor just announced indoor mask mandate for Louisiana. <laughs> and, you know, this drudge... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of good to see that 
it's just one page. You know, you scroll through, you take a look at what our enemy is doing, mainstream media, what they're speaking, uh, and just on one page, it's really, well, here I got the chipmunks with plague, uh, prompt Tahoe closures, and uh, peak COVID now. Whoa. Uh-oh. Things are happening. But here, fully vaxxed Lindsey Graham tests positive. Wonder if he went to Provincetown. Provincetown is a gay area uh, and on the Cape. We all know he's gay, right? Okay. So, yeah, um, it's not good. Australia deploys helicopters and soldiers to keep people inside during <gasps> lockdown. Well, don't forget also, we've, we, uh, we have foreign policy news. Iran ready to deliver crushing military response after U.S. and Israel vow imminent uh, action for tanker attacks. So many tankers are being blown up. So, yeah. Oh, boy. The bombing continues. Um, Biden announces that we're staying in Syria indefinitely. Oh, he announces we're pulling out of Iraq. We don't pull out of anywhere. Even if some soldiers come home. Do you know that our Pentagon spends billions of dollars on private contractors that they send into countries? Okay. So, no, the wars never end. <clears throat> the wars just never end. The wars just never end. Nothing ever ends. Everything just keeps getting worse and worse. That's a testament to the condition of the human race. So, you have no right to spread your respiratory droplets on me. <laughs> oh, boy. This guy is a Democratic... Uh, is it senator from... Texas? Ted Lieu? You have no right. You you have no right, see the emphasis, to spread your respiratory droplets on me, on others, in public spaces, and in businesses. How dare you? The majority of reasonable Americans are going to fight the tyranny of the minority who insists they can leave their saliva anywhere? Do you see how sick and twisted our <laughs> population is? Are you getting it? Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. What do you say to that? Our leaders, Ted Lieu, you're just spitting all over the place, and how dare you? You have no right to do that. He never disappoints. I like his framing. Anti-maskers are essentially arguing for the right to spit on people. Last time I checked, the Constitution says nothing about the fundamental right to spew saliva. Hmm. Breathing. Hmm. He's saying no one has a right to breathe in public or businesses. <laughs> are you stupid or something? Yeah. Yeah. If you believe normal social interaction to be a bath and others respiratory droplets and saliva, where'd you stand on this before COVID? I'm guessing there's more than a touch of ongoing and now enabled OCD here. That, I believe, is also a disorder that has, wow, spread like the Delta variant. Very contagious. Obsessive, compulsive Americans. So, yeah, this is the argument for permanent masking. It could be. Yeah, because, well, it's not, he's just talking about your breathing, 
you're talking in public and, well, you're spewing saliva all over. And how dare you? You have no right to infect me. Well, isn't that true about the flu? Other? Yeah, a cold? What? Yeah. Ugh. Breathing and speaking spread. Spread. Spit. Everyone has a right to breathe and speak wherever they please. And Ted Lou has a right to hide in his basement like a lunatic if normal human interaction frightens him. Who? by the way, just posted this. Can you see this? I can't speak it. Not on YouTube. It won't be allowed. Even though he's an expert. Uh, uh, Biden's top advisor. I can't speak this. He can speak it on CNN, but I can't speak it on YouTube. You see it? Maybe it's a little bit too small. Well, you can click on the link below and check it out. So, listen to this. Uh, they are arguing that this is individual responsibility and the individual's right to decide. What is your... And he's talking about the Republican governors. Republican governors. Who have said, uh, we're not doing these mask mandates again. So, it's the divide and conquer, right? Okay. Here we go. Sorry to do this, but it's important for the next few pieces. Your answer to these, these, you know, these are Republican governors in some of the largest states in our country. Well, John, I disagree with them. I respectfully disagree with them. The fact is there are things that are individual responsibilities that one has, and there are things that have to do with you individually, which also impact others and get w the spread of infection that we're seeing now the surge in cases john is impacting everyone in the country so although you want to respect a person's individual right when you're dealing with a public health situation and we are in fact in a very serious public health challenge here with a pandemic with a virus that has an extraordinary capability of spreading rapidly and efficiently from person to person. So a person's individual, individual decision to not wear a mask not only impacts them, because if they get infected, even though they say it's my decision, if I get infected, I'll worry about that. But the fact is, if you get infected, even if you are without symptoms, you very well may infect another person who may be vulnerable, who may get seriously ill. So in essence, you are encroaching on their individual rights because you're making them vulnerable. So you could argue that situation both ways. Wow. So everything is really deadly serious again. And, well, everybody mask up, right? Because you, you could be infected, not know it. You know, that asymptomatic spread that he said actually doesn't spread then the CDC World Health Organization well they all said asymptomatic is not a problem don't worry about that but now we're back asymptomatic you could be infected and spread spread this virus does it doesn't that hold true for Obama Obama's maskless ball ex-president risks super spreader event by inviting 500 people to his 60th birthday party at his $12 million home, Mothard's Vineyard. Pearl Jam will perform, and guests, including Spielberg, yes, Democrats went Hollywood, a while ago. Not so concerned about the little guy anymore. They're only concerned about, well, how much can I get? Yeah, I'll step into public office. I'll be a public servant. Hell, if I'm a public servant, I get to live in this. Wow! Moffitt's Vineyard, 30 acres. 30 acres, 7,000 square foot home. Woof! They bought it in 2019. 12 million. They weren't that 
rich when they got into office. You know, that executive office. What did they have? Like a million? How? Wow, man. These guys are sitting pretty. I think we should all become public servants. Maybe we too could live amongst the elite, violate all of their rules, never ever get shamed for it, or in fact, Saki, well, <laughs> look at this family. Oh, and the cross. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. You know that white people oppress them? Oh, my God. This country. It's frightening. So, yeah. 500 guests. Come on down. Because we're rich. We don't have to play by the rules. And clearly, the richer you are, the more the virus stays away from you. I think the virus actually is going for people who still have uh, a moral core, even if they just have a resemblance of it. But those who are completely gutted of a moral core, that's the virus doesn't want to go near them. So they're completely protected. It's an argument I could make, don't you think? Okay, well, it's not a super spreading event because it's Barack. Listen to Saki trying to somehow, uh, I don't know, defend or... I mean, she really should have just said, look, it's not a good idea, but she didn't. Is President Obama setting the wrong example about how serious COVID-19 is by hosting a big birthday party with hundreds of people this week? Well, I would certainly refer you to uh, the team who is working for my former boss to give you more specifics of what the protocols are in place. But I would note first that former President Obama has been a huge advocate of individuals getting vaccinated. Uh, when CDC provided, has provided, what CDC has provided guidance on is for indoor settings in high or substantial high zones of COVID cases. This event, according to all the public reporting, is outdoors and in a moderate. And no one will go indoors, okay? No one. Moderate zone. But in addition, there is testing requirements and other steps they are taking, which I'm sure they can outline for you in more detail. But is there any concern just because, as you've said here, and you've had people saying over the last couple of days, vaccinated people can still spread this Delta variant uh, around. So is there concern that this President Obama birthday party might become a super spreader event? Well, I think, Peter, the guidance is about what steps people can take uh, when they're in public settings. Indoor settings specifically was the new guidance to keep themselves and others safe. In terms of what protocols uh, they are taking, I would refer you to them, and I'm sure they can give you more details. And just last one. So people who are watching this at home and they see, well, President Obama can have a party with several hundred people. Should they think that it is okay for them to have a party with several hundred people now? Well, we certainly advise everyone to follow public health guidelines, uh, which I know the former president, who is a huge advocate of getting vaccinated, of following the guidance of public health experts, would certainly advocate for himself as well. Is I don't think it sets a good example. Come on, Saki. Uh, look, it is the most contagious variant of the virus that I have ever seen, CDC Director Walensky. The most contagious in my entire career, is what she said. So does it matter if it's indoor or outdoors? No. Now, we know what this is all about, okay? But I'm just going, you know, look, trying to make inroads, you know, with the people that actually believe this horseshit. So, well, those who attend this 
party clearly are not too worried. Well, what else do we have? We've got <laughs> Mayor Bowser. Oh, D.C. Mayor Bowser officiates a maskless indoor wedding after reinstating a mask mandate for her peasants, for her slaves. By the way, there's a new variant in Colombia. Can't be bothered. Okay. Fewer than 24 hours after Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser celebrated her 49th birthday with a DJ and the comedian Dave Chappelle. Oh, boy, have the Democrats gone Hollywood. Oh, I'm just so... What? Uh, soulless? What are you? Walking the low road? Uh, I'm just uh, so enthralled by celebrity, and I'm just so happy that I'm a D.C. mayor and I can invite Dave Chappelle along. She officiated a wedding at The Line, D.C., a four-star hotel in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of the city, and despite her own order, mask up indoors, the wedding reception featured hundreds of unmasked guests served by dozens of wait staff, including a conspicuously unmasked Bowser. Do, 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 do. Unmasked, unmasked, indoors, mask, unmasked. Oh, boy. Well, for the elite and their, their government uh, slaves, which is what they are, they get to do whatever the hell they want to do. They take their orders. They implement the orders. You got to wear a mask indoors. And then they show up indoors without masks. You a little tired of this? Yeah, exclusive. Here she is. Yay! I'm so great. And I'm a Hollywood and celebrities will actually attend my birthday. Oh! Oh, well. Uh, the insanity, the Washingtonian, see, the Washington Examiner actually broke the story. But. The Washingtonian comes out with an article how, uh, <sighs> so Muriel Bowser under fire for allegedly violating her indoor mask mandate at a wedding, and then they actually say um, that the person who broke the story wasn't invited to the wedding. Wasn't invited? To the wedding. Uh, does that matter? Well, in our new journalism, uh, it matters because now journalists publish stories when they've been invited to. When they've been invited to. <laughs> Upton Sinclair was not invited to meat packing plant in Chicago. It's uh it's truly disturbing because everything has become so obvious and this is what we just have to endure. The COVID Delta surge is creating a messaging cluster F do do K. Biden's team is frustrated with hyperbolic and irresponsible media coverage while tensions have reportedly flared inside the administration over how best to communicate with the public. Well, it is a cluster F dash dash K because you can't keep it straight. You can't keep lies straight. Lies just begin to, like, oh, they fester their own disease. 
And, uh, well, see, I wish all Americans could get that the messaging is really kind of off the rails, insane. Um, maybe they would question mm, the science. Being anti-vaccine is being against healing. Jesus was a healer. Anti-vaccine Christians are anti-Christ. So this guy is a pastor, I guess. Yeah, let's see. Author of If God is Love, Don't Be a Jerk. <laughs> well, oh my God. Well, again, I'll recommend, you know, going over to Twitchy. Uh, click on the link below, bookmark it, because oh, it's pretty much guaranteed for a laugh once a day. Um, conservatives are not getting vaccinated. Well, though they, they're the Antichrist, but there are liberals who haven't been vaccinated. I'm not too religious, but this rustles my jimmies. <laughs> Calling them an antichrist, that should bring them around. So you're condemning Christians by projecting your perceived self-righteousness onto Christ, thereby giving you the moral high ground from which you glare down past the plank in your eye. Oof. 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 All dogs are mammals. Cats are mammals. Therefore, all dogs are cats. Quite the stretch. Well, you might want to read this. The CDC is a threat to science. Interesting article. Okay, that's all. <laughs>